What's going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. Okay guys, so we are basically going to continue our coverage over the Hellfire Gala event. Now this event is actually very important. And the reason why, because it was a way for Marvel to kind of say to the entire world or really the public that mutants are no longer second class. Now, you could say that was the case with House of X and Power of X, but this crossover is really more of that kind of like, hey, they are really no longer the second class. They're now first class. And the reason why I'm saying that because with the Hellfire Gala event, it was a way for the X-Men to invite humans to their party to basically show off what they have accomplished in their short period of time of being a nation. But on top of that is to show what's to come down the road. Now, they already showed what's to come down the road back in X-Men number 21 and also Planet Size X-Men, two books written by Hickman and also uh, Gary Dugan. Now, with that being said, those two books basically show that the mutants are able to accomplish great things if they're left alone. And so they were able to say, hey, look, look at Mars. We were able to make Mars a place where humans and mutants can now live on if they want to in the near future. And that's to show mutants can do great things if humans let mutants work. Now, this crossover was also used as a way to kind of use all the different X-Men titles, but to also use those X-Men titles to basically show how this event is affecting different X-Men members. So like the X-Men, the X-Factor, X-Force, New Mutants. And by the way, this video is focusing on New Mutants. And so with that being said, you do have the New Mutants right now kind of arriving at this party. Now, with the new mutants actually arriving at this party, we kind of see them arriving, and this book is telling us these are the characters you're going to see in this story who are going to be very important for this book. But also, the opening pages of this book is also reminding us about Warlock. Now, when it comes to Warlock, Warlock actually belongs to a race, and guys, please forgive me, but this race called Technarchy, and I really hope I pronounced that correctly. But basically, Technarchy was a race that was basically an artificial intelligent race that goes around and kind of classify societies across the universe and decide to remove them or to kind of give them a new purpose. Now, when it comes to Warlock, though, Warlock is an off and on X-Men character and he had a couple deaths quotation marks but of course he was kind of a secret on Kakoa because he was alive but Cypher did not want the island to know that he was alive. Now after X of Swords everybody found out that basically Warlock is once again alive and so he's able to actually attend this party because he's been an off and on X-Men character for so many years. Now, this does lead into the next storyline, which is Danny Moonstar and Rain Sinclair having a conversation about what's going on with her son. Now, remember, up to this point in the New Mutant series, basically, Rain Sinclair is trying to have the five bring her son back to life. Now, remember, when it comes to the five, the five is basically five mutants who have the ability to bring someone back to life. Now, when I say that, it's not like them just, oh, here you are, you're alive again, and go to the world and have a great day. No, it's really more of like, we made you a clone body, and we download your memories into this clone body, have a great day. And so, with that being said, every single time somebody dies, a clone of you is made to replace you. And that is how, basically, the X-Men are coming back to life. Now, with that being said... Uh, Rain Sinclair wanted the five to bring her son back to life. Here's the problem though, they can't. And the reason why, because Cerebro basically said that her son is not dead. 
or they're unable to figure out what actually is going on with her son. They can't declare her son dead or alive. Now, usually when it comes to an idea of finding out a mutant is dead and how did they die, basically X Factor jumps in. The problem is though X Factor, which is kind of like a group of characters who do detective work, were unable to figure out what actually happened to her son. And so with that, they're kind of stuck in this limbo position where they have no idea if her son is alive or dead right now. And of course, if they can't find out if, if he is dead or alive, then the five is not allowed to basically make a new clone body of her son. Because the idea of making a clone, meaning that they can only be one person or one of you on Earth. But if you're not dead and they go ahead and make a clone of you, then there's two of you running around and that is a huge problem. And so basically it is uh, Rain Sinclair right now saying, I can't have my son back because they cannot declare if he's dead or alive. Now, this does lead into, well, it kind of leads into how like those old 90s and early 2000 movies went, where basically the hot girl or the main character of the movie walks into the room or a party and you have everybody stop what they're doing to look at that person. And so actually at the Hellfire Gala event, it actually happens in this section right here where you have Karma actually walk into the room. Now, when Karma walks into the room, you have everybody just stop. They're like, oh, yo, you see her? She looks good, bro. Like kind of like that, right? But either way, though, when they do, when she does walk in, of course, that is the moment you do have that one guy who actually tries to hit on her. Now, this guy right here, his name is known as Barry the Artist. Now, the reason why he's known for that name is because basically he is a human who was invited to the party, but he believes that he's more famous than he actually is because he thinks because of his artwork, he should be able to talk to anybody any way he wants to, but also get any girl he wants to as well. And so when he sees Karma, he's all like, oh, Karma, she seems very cute. Let me go ahead and get her number. And of course, you have Karma say no. Now, of course, he does continue to try to get her number or just get with her, but of course, Everything he does just makes her more upset to the point where she basically used her powers on him to make him spill his drinks on himself. Now, when that happened, he gets very upset and he thinks because he is so famous that once he spread word about how what she did to him, that basically it is going to begin the process of a lot of people like humans hating on her. But that is the moment you have karma just Put him in his place and saying, listen, your artwork is great and all, but it's not as great as you think it is. It's not top tier. Matter of fact, it's probably mid tier, mid tier. So right now, the way you're talking, the way you're acting is annoying, it's pointless. So why in the world are you doing it for? And so basically it's karma saying, you may go out there and try your best to spread the word, but let me tell you now, if you do that, I will do more apparency things to you. And of course, you do have them kind of back off. Now, that is the moment where we actually do pick up with Warpath talking to Warlock. Now, the reason why these two characters are talking to one another is because basically right now, you have Warlock very upset with the idea that he feels like he was cut out of Cypher's life. Now, remember... In the, all the X-Men books, Cypher and Warlock were literally connected by the hip. Like literally, Cypher and Warlock were best friends. And for Warlock, he's having a hard time with the idea that Cypher got married. Because remember, in X of Swords, one of the many rounds that Kokoa won, but also Arako did too, were basically... Cypher got married to a character known as Bay, And so this is Cypher and Bay in the honeymoon phase. With them being married, they want to spend a lot of time with one another. But for Warpath, not Warpath, sorry, for Warlock, he's having a hard time actually understanding the idea that when somebody gets married, they want to spend time with their husband or wife more than you. 
And you have to realize you're no longer first in their life. That now their wife, their husband is first in their life. You're now second, third, whatever. But you have to realize that is life. But it's Warpath telling Warlock, no one had cut you out of their life. It's just that he's in the honeymoon phase. Give him time or actually talk to him about how you feel. But you have to realize how he feels as well. And of course, Warlock does that. Now, that is the moment where we actually do pick up with a character who's narrating. Now, this character who is narrating right now is kind of doing this while you have Warlock reconnecting with Cypher. And so while Warlock is doing that, you do have this character basically tell us that right now he feels like a hero in a way. And the reason why he feels like a hero is because a group of children who felt lost actually came to him because they felt lost but when they came to him he kind of remember how he felt a long time ago when he was their age he also felt lost but of course he said when it comes to Kakoa it paints this picture where basically everyone should believe in the idea that basically everything is going to be okay but that's not true. The world is not perfect. And matter of fact, in the short period of time being on the island, we had a lot of different incidents and more to come down the road. But of course, we continue to believe that this is going to be a perfect world. But in reality, it's not going to be a perfect world. Now, with all that being said, this person is saying that basically he was trying to get everyone ready this group of kids this group of kids sorry i had a hard time saying that but getting these group of kids ready for the future because these kids right now they feel lost but they still have to be ready for what's to come down the road because what comes down the road could be big it could be huge and of course they have to be ready they have to be ruthless now with all that being said the person who is saying this is the Shadow King. Now, of course, while he is saying that, he's basically talking to a particular character. And that character is Gabriella or Gabrielle. And that character is better, better known as uh, Scout. Now, her name Scout was not her first name. Her original name was actually Honey Badger. But of course, they changed her name for some unknown reason. And honestly, I hate that. I like Honey Badger better than Scout, but hey, whatever. But either way, though, he's talking to her because she has been trying to stop the Shadow King from basically controlling her friends. And so the person who was narrating was the Shadow King. But of course, it's him saying goodbye to her. Now, it's not him saying goodbye, you know, whatever, see you tomorrow, see you next week, is him saying goodbye like, I'm going to kill you. And of course, while you have everybody looking for her, so like Wolverine, the girl Wolverine, Laura, and also Dakin or Dakin, you know, some folks pronounce that name differently, but while they're out there looking for her and nobody can find her, well, because he killed her and he left her body found by her friends. And so that is where the story actually ends on that note right there with the death of Scout or Honey Badger. You know, I still say Honey Badger is a better name, but whatever. But either way, now she's dead because the Shadow King killed her off. And honestly, that's messed up. But either way, this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, I'll see you all next time. Later.